Again, as I mentioned, when you guys see something, if you're having trouble visualizing this, I would just forget about secants. Think of this as x plus 1 times x minus 1, right, over like y. Is there anything I can do here that might help me simplify by applying an oper um, algebraic operation? I could fact multiply, right, using FOIL, right? Yes? And you guys understand that's the difference of two squares, right? So I can write that as the first term squared minus the second term squared. But everybody understands the middle terms cancel out, right? OK. So this gives us secant squared of x minus 1 over sine squared of x. Correct? Well, whenever you guys see a squared, remember we had cosine squared and sine squared last time? Whenever you guys see a trigonometric function squared, you're going to want to think Pythagorean identities. And again, you will be seeing this on your sheet of paper pretty soon. But whenever you see a term squared, I automatically look for Pythagorean identities. Because this is our second Pythagorean identity we're going to go over. And the Pythagorean identity here is 1 plus cotangent squared of theta equals secant squared of theta. Well, if you guys, ah, I wrote off the board. I'll write over here. Yeah, there we go. 1 plus cotangent squared of theta equals secant squared of theta. Now, would you guys agree with me if I just subtracted the 1 to the other side, then they would be secant squared? This is x, not theta. But do you guys see how it would be the same thing? Yes? So this is equivalent to, or watch, I'll just do it. Do you guys see secant squared of theta is equal to cotangent? Okay. Cotangent, uh, now this problem is x though, not theta. Where did I get what? Again, this is, will be given to you. This is a Pythagorean identity. It will be given to you. Okay? So you will eventually have these in front of you. Um, now, Again, is this a single trigonometric function? No. So now we kind of need to go into. Yes, it is. Thank you. So now we need to get this. We need to simplify this again. So again, I'm going to go to my next identity, which we call a quotient identity. Remember, guys, that um, the, remember that cotangent. Cotangent of x, or cotangent of theta, is x over y. Correct? Do you guys agree with me? Right? We did this in our problems. Correct? However, that's for points that are on the unit circle. Right? That's only for the coordinate points on the unit circle. What did the coordinate points on the unit circle represent for x? That was which trigonometric function? Cosine and sine. So. When we're using our trigonometric identities, we're not talking about points on the inner circle right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace x with cosine of theta over sine of theta. So now, if I rewrite this as um, cosine of theta over sine of theta all over, oops, that's squared over sine squared of theta, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm an idiot. Did I write this down wrong? Oh, I did. I'm an idiot. My whole thing's wrong. Can you just do it on that problem, though? Hold on. Shh. Guys, so wrong. So, sorry, it actually equals tangent. I got to change my things. So anyways, this is um, tangent of theta, then, is sine of theta over cosine of theta. Again, you'll be given this. I'll tell you guys where this is at. So. This is sine squared theta over cosine squared of theta. Does everybody see that? 
I'm gonna when I give this to you, I'll tell you what the right answer is. I, I messed up on my thing. I wrote it wrong. I didn't write. Well, I didn't. I didn't write it wrong. I didn't add it in there. Yeah. I am sorry. I should have. I should have known this, but it's been a while since I did these. Secant and tangent are the same Pythagorean <laughs> identity. Okay. So now you have this. If you guys were to simplify a fraction over another number, if you were to put this over 1 and multiply by the reciprocal, what would you be left with? Cosine squared of theta. Okay. 